Go banana slugs. Woo, Santa Cruz. Okay. Um, so I want to talk about uh, bloom filters and the probability of a false positive. Actually, first, before we go ahead and compute that probability, uh, I just want to spend a couple minutes reviewing a couple really basic things about probability and a, some uh, things you probably remember from your probability class. Uh, and then a so, something you probably kind of remember from your calc class, but may not have entirely stuck. So um, I just want to go ahead and again review. Um, if I have two different events, what's the probability that both of them happen? It's the probability that the first happens times the probability that the second happens. Okay. So yeah, the probability that say there's several different um, aisles in the parking lot and Every day I go out, I forget where I park, so I choose a random aisle and just walk down that aisle. And will I find my car uh, as I walk down that aisle? Uh, if there's, say, three different aisles, well, one chance in three that it will happen. And if separately there's one chance in five that it's going to rain, uh, what's the probability that it will rain and I'll find my car in that aisle? It's one in three times one or five, giving me one in 15. Uh, actually, I'm going to be concerned more about, hey, I'm going to go and one day I go out and the chance I find my car on that first try is one in three. Then the next day, on Tuesday, I go out again and do the same thing. I still haven't learned how to remember where I parked my car. Uh, what's the probability that on Monday and on Tuesday, I'll look out and find my car on the very first aisle that I look in? Um, that might be one in three times one in three. And what's the probability that it happens all week long, all, all five workdays? Um, yeah, that'd be one chance in three to the fifth power. Okay. So the probability that uh, one event happens uh, k times in a row is going to be x to the k, if x is the probability that it happened once. Okay, and of course we also know that the probability of something not happening is 1 minus the probability that it does happen, and we can just sort of put those two together and say, hey, what's the chance, so the chance I don't find my car in the first aisle look is two-thirds. And now what's the chance that, hey, I go all week and every single day of the week I I get unlucky, I don't find my car on the first aisle I try. Uh, it's two thirds times two thirds, you know, two thirds to the fifth power. So the chance that something doesn't happen k times in a row would be one minus x to the k. Yeah, both, you, you remember those. Uh, we're gonna use them again, and I was priming your, your memory for that. Uh, I do want to remind us about something about calculus, okay? Um, and I'm gonna, it's written down here, but I'm gonna go ahead and put it on paper. And I'm not sh quite sure how this will show up, but we'll give it a try. 1 plus x raised, sorry, 1 plus 1 over x raised to the x power. So, well, that's kind of a weird thing to, to say. Um, because I'm going to think of x being big here, uh, say x is 10. Uh, 1 plus 1 tenth, 1 1.1, raised to the tenth power. Well, raising to a power makes something really big, uh, but of course we're only taking 1.1 to the tenth power. Uh, gosh, and what if I take x being 20 or 30, 100? Then I have 1.01, but I'm raising it to the hundredth power. But, you know, 1.01, even that, every time you multiply, it only gets 1% bigger. So... Gosh, I'm not clear. Does this, as x gets bigger and bigger and bigger in the limit, uh, what happens? Uh, does this get bigger and bigger and bigger? Does it go off to infinity? Does it, I mean, if x is infinity, I have 1 plus 0 to the infinite power. That sounds like 1 to infinity, which sounds like 1. Gosh, so does this go off to infinity? Does it go to 1? What the heck? It uh, turns out neither. It doesn't get really big, it doesn't get really small, it is in between, it goes to 2.71828, Euler's constant. Okay, and some people will take this as the definition of, of Euler's constant. Um, so yeah, and, and how do you go ahead and do this? You can um, actually derive this from uh, L'Hopital's rule um, and use that. Uh, if you make some other assumptions first. Anyway, uh, I just want you to remember this. If you see something of the form 1 plus x to the x power, and you don't even need uh, a limit here, just see if x is 10 or if x is 100. I mean, go go try 
plug, taking a calculator, plugging in 1.01 to the hundredth power, you'll get something that's kind of close to 2.718. So, okay, so that's good to know, and we're going to use this in our, our next bound. Um, one other thing to mention, and I'm just going to throw it on, you know, something that follows from this, uh, you'll often see instead, uh, what if you have 1 plus a over x to the x-th power? Okay, so what if you got that? And again, we're trying to take a, a limit here, or poor man's limit. I'm just thinking of x being a big number, where of course 100 counts as a big number, right? Clearly. Um, okay, so what should this be? It turns out that if you see something of that form, uh, the top equation already tells us what the answer needs to be. Let's just work it through. Um, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite that 1 plus a over x. I'm going to rewrite that in kind of a weird way. I'm going to say 1 plus 1 over, because I, I, I want to get at something that looks like what's on the top, because the top I know now know how to deal with. If I have 1 over something raised to the something power, and that something is getting bigger, 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 um, then I'm good. Uh, so I'm going to take 1 over x over a. Okay. And then that raised to the x power, I'm going to, this is kind of weird. I'm going to write that x power as x over a times a. Okay, well that's that's clearly the same thing, but the nice thing about it is once I take the limit, I'm going to keep the mathematicians happy. All right, so once I take this, I know that if I have something to the x over a, then take that whole thing raised to the a power, or x to the a times a, then I can take it to the x over a, then I can raise that to the a power, and put the equal sign in. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to throw parentheses, big old fat parentheses all over that. Um, and the mathematicians are like, whoa, whoa, you just moved that raising to the eighth power outside of the limit. Are you allowed to do that? And they'll go off and argue for a while and say, yeah, okay, we'll, we'll let you do that. Um, and so, wait a minute, everything inside that big parentheses, we know that. Yeah, that's E. So, so that's the derivation. Um, people will sometimes show you the very top formula here. Uh, Sometimes they'll go ahead and just phrase it like this a little bit more generally. You can see if you plug in a equals one, you get this here. So, okay. Um, I just, I like remembering this one and then being able to derive this one from it because it's a pretty simple thing. So, uh, the other thing that's good to know is if you plug in negative one, okay, um, that is one minus one over x to the x. Okay, um, yeah, then we're going to go ahead and get uh, e to the minus 1, which is 1 over e. Okay, so if you have a minus sign in there, you've got 1 over e. That's something that number is about 1 over 2.7, so about 1 third roughly. Sorry, 1 minus 1 third, about 2 thirds, 0.67 or so. Um, okay, so just keep those numbers in mind. Again, this is should be in a limit. If x is large, then we get this approximation here. So... In fact, at this point, I'll just go ahead and make those a wavy equal sign, uh, but I can't draw upside down so it doesn't look very good. Okay, so let's just keep those in mind and take that calculus and be good.